For the ancients, this was the Sea of the Sirens. Rocked by the endless rhythm of the waves, the Sirens' irresistible call went out to sailors, inducing them to forget their journey's purpose and to lose themselves in the magical beauty of these places. The enchantment is still here. That Ischia possessed innumerable attractions was undoubtedly a well-known fact to the ancients, and traces of their presence on the island include the remains of the first Greek settlements and, more noticeably, the ruins of the Aragonese castle, a real city in itself, which grew up around the formidable fortress built by Gerone Siracusano. Green hills were the first things sighted by the early Greek sailors who landed on the island at the Bay of San Montano, eight centuries BC. They had come from afar, from the island of Euboea, but the island of Ischia seemed immediately familiar to them. On the promontory of Mount Vico and on the surrounding plains, the Greeks built their new city, Pithecusa, which became the nerve center for trade between the Greeks and the Italian peoples. This was the first Greek settlement in the Western Mediterranean, the beginnings of Magna Graecia. There are housed the invaluable archaeological findings brought to light by Giorgio Buchner in the necropolis of San Montano. The most important of these is the so-called Cup of Nesta, on which is engraved the most ancient written text ever found in the Western world. The area around Laco Ameno constituted the island's most important inhabited center up till the end of the Middle Ages, when the barbarian invasions convinced the local population to flee to the islet where the castle was later to be built. There, on the islet, a town grew up, whereas on the great island, as it used to be known, only scattered villages remained. There, the population was prey to the dangers of foreign invasion and the fear of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which were quite frequent at the time. The island, meantime, was the object of raids by Saracen pirates, and along the coast, imposing defense towers were built. For Rio was on the most exposed side, and there the population constructed 14 of these towers using the characteristic green calcareous tufa from Mount Epomeo. One of these, the famous Torrione, now houses a museum dedicated to a local island artist. The coasts of Ischia are a majestic spectacle especially along the southern coast where imposing sheer rock faces drop down to the sea. The complex geological history of the island is all there, engraved in the many layers of volcanic rock of every color and hue, which bear witness to the eruptions which over the millennia have formed the land of Ischia. The coastline varies continually. Severe promontories covered with vegetation are followed by magnificent inlets where the sea reflects a myriad of colors. Two of Ischia's most precious jewels can be found on this coast. One is Sant'Angelo, the picturesque little village facing the sea. With its little pastel-colored houses clinging to the hillside, Sant'Angelo is a still authentic oasis of uncontaminated peace and tranquility. Just beyond the village is the Maronti Beach, the largest on the island. The Maronti Lido has been awarded nominations from the European Union and is famous, among other things, for the high temperature of its sand, which is also used for therapeutic purposes. More promontories and inlets form the outline of the island, up till the Carta Romana Beach, which has been visited since ancient times. 
Here, the visitor comes upon one of the most amazing sights on the island, the Bay of Santa Anna, with its enormous rocks, and the little island crowned by the Aragonese castle. At La Coameno, we find the famous mushroom, the unmistakable rock formation of green tufa. Between the promontories of Montebico and Zaro, the magnificent bay of San Montano spreads out before us. It was here that the Greek settlers first set foot on Ischia. The Forio coastline also offers views of extraordinary beauty. A gold mine was how Dr. Giulio Giazzolino described the thermal springs on the island of Ischia in a celebrated book published in 1588. Rainwater falls on the land of Ischia and running near the fumaroles heats up, stealing from the rocks those minerals which enrich it, giving it healing properties. The quality of services offered to clients in the Ischian facilities is remarkably high. Traditional treatments are now accompanied by massages, physiotherapy, corrective gymnastics and rehabilitation, and soreness. There is a growing trend towards treating the psychological and physical well-being of the individual client in the spa establishments. The island of Ischia is the only place in the world where Mother Nature has been aided by the hand of man in creating the wonders of the spa park. In some of the most beautiful places on the island, the visitor is offered hot water pools of various temperatures set in luxuriant gardens. An opportunity for both enjoyment and reflection, which confirms Ischia as an island for all tastes, all seasons, and for people of all ages.